So we're going to talk just a little bit today about how you go about formulating your research problem in educational research, specifically for how to develop your proposal for research in ETL 805 and 806. So first, we just want to go ahead and get started. Uh, you have a short period of time to develop your, your research proposal, and many students are ready to get started and start collecting data right from the get-go. But before we can do that, we really have some questions to ask, and we really need to formulate our proposal. And so we start with a problem. And you need to, as a student, identify what you think is the problem. So I think X is a problem. And so in your proposal, you start by outlining, well, what does that mean? And when I say, what does that mean? What I want you to describe is, what does that look like? What does that problem look like? And I'd like you to use observable, measurable terms. What actually makes this a problem? Whatever it is that you're wanting to address, what makes it a problem? And then the question you answer is, for whom is this a problem? Because you want your research proposal to be very specific to uh, the problem that you're addressing in the setting that you are addressing it, uh, and for any particular participants that you are addressing. So in, a, in, in the specific school that you're working or in the classroom that you're working. So for whom is this a problem? And what evidence is there that shows you that it's a problem? How do you know it's really a problem? Once you've been able to document some responses to those questions, then the question becomes, well, you've addressed a problem, but so what? Um, what's the reason that this problem has to be addressed? What happens if the problem isn't fixed? That's the so what part of it. Then you move to the current research and the scholarly literature on your topic. So the next couple of questions that you answer are based on your own research in the literature or your literature review. You ask yourself, who else has seen this problem? What other researchers are writing about this? And in what settings are they seeing that problem? What factors seem to or could affect solving this problem? And you're looking directly to the literature for that. What are you seeing in scholarly research that says, these are the things that seem to be affecting this problem? And when you think about your problem and you look at the research that exists, what ways have people already tried to solve or address this problem? And once you have reviewed those things and take that into consideration, you're going to devise your own intervention or idea on how to solve the problem. And so you ask yourself, if I wanted to solve this problem, how would I try to solve it? Remember, however, when you're working in special education, we have to use evidence-based practices with our students. Then we move to the section on data. And really, when you're thinking about these questions, you need to also be thinking about what kind of data would I need in order to know if I solved the problem or not? What would that data look like? And again, we think about that in observable, measurable terms. From whom would I get the data? Am I going to pull that data from uh, students by asking them questions? from teachers by giving them a survey, from, uh, from parents who participate in an interview? Am I going to look at permanent products like student work samples? Uh, am I going to do classroom-based observations where I take data on a particular type of event that might occur? How will I collect the data? Uh, you need to think about if you're, if you're teaching full-time, are you in a position to do observational data? Uh, if you're not, you may need to reframe your question. Um, are you going to be able to get teachers to participate in, uh, in a survey that you want to give them? How will you get teachers to do this? What, how would you actually go about collecting the data? Uh, if you say you want to look at test scores, do you have access to those test scores? Uh, is it classroom-based assessment that you create and can monitor? Or are they standardized tests that you may not have access to until after your particular ETL course has ended? And then you also have to address, how do you know if the data that you need is qualitative, is quantitative, or if it's both? 
Once you've answered those questions, then you are ready to go. And you can fill out your advisor approval form and submit that to me.